My name is Alessandro Trinchera and today I would like to present you the work of Lyndon Ashmore, a British physicist who developed and published the theory New Tire Light for the explanation of the stellar redshift, of the cosmic microwave background radiation and of the dark matter in a non-expanding universe. The New Tire Light theory is alternative to the Big Bang and it will revolutionate what we so far think is correct about astrophysics and cosmology. You can find the content of this video in the following books. Big Bang Blasted, published in 2006. Tired Light, published in 2016. Many scientific publications. Please check the link below in the video description. Ashmore's theory reaches independently the prediction of Fritz Zwicky from 1929. Zwicky was the first man to predict that a photon of light loses energy by increasing the wavelength on a journey to Earth. But Ashmore is the first scientist having developed a strong mathematical theory that explains this topic. Let's resume in a few words this theory. We have a galaxy that emits photon of light traveling throughout the space. This photon of light interacts with hydrogen clouds composed of free electrons. The incoming photon gets absorbed from the electron and gets remitted but reshifted, it means with a loss of energy. We can imagine the incoming photon having this wavelength and after remission it gets reshifted, it means that wavelength gets stretched out. The electron receives a part of the energy of the incoming photon and starts to vibrate till it's brought to rest. When it's brought to rest, it radiates energy, a photon in the ultraviolet field of the spectrum. The remitted photon from the electron due to collision photon-electron and the secondary photon composing the cosmic background radiation in the ultraviolet field of the spectrum reach both the Earth and it is what we detect. New tired light explains the redshift of photons as interaction with the intergalactic medium predicts an exponential shape to the Hubble diagram, predicts a mechanism by which the cosmic background radiation is generated, predicts a time dilation in supernovae, provides a reliable explanation for dark matter, states that the universe is not expanding. <music> The photons of light emitted from distant galaxies travel through space and what we measure is the increasing of their wavelength. In order to keep the speed of light constant, the frequency of the photons must decrease. It corresponds to a loss of energy as the Planck constant does not vary. The reason why we have a redshift is the collision of the photons with the electrons which compose the plasma in the intergalactic space. It was, and still is, always the redshift to be measured, not the velocity as imposed by the Big Bang theory to justify an expanding universe. In new tire light, you can distinguish three different photons of light in the collision process with an electron. The first, the incoming photon. The second, the same remitted photon but reshifted. The redshift of the remitted photon is independent on the wavelength of the incoming photon, as the increase of wavelength is the same. Collision after collision with electrons through the plasma of space, the photons lose energy every time and the wavelength becomes longer and longer. The shift in wavelength is proportional to the distance traveled. The third, a secondary emitted photon emitted by the recalling electron that forms the cosmic background radiation. The energy lost by the incoming photon due to collision incoming photon electron is transferred to the electron which recoils and accelerates. Whenever an electron accelerates, radiates energy until it is brought to rest. This energy is called breaking radiation. <music> the 
There is no Compton effect in new tire lights because this effect tells us about electrons which simultaneously absorb and re-emit photons without any transfer of energy. Moreover, the emitted photon changes direction during the re-emission, causing, after several collisions, the scattering of the photon itself and therefore we will see a blur image. With new tire light, the image of the photon is clear. According to the new tidal light theory, the cosmic background radiation is local, formed by nearby plasma radiating continuously energy. In the Big Bang theory, the zone of radiation is at the edge of the universe, as if we were looking at the Big Bang itself. If the cosmic background radiation were at the edge of the universe, it should be gravitational lensed. There is no evidence of it. Therefore, the cosmic background radiation must be local. Studies found that the cosmic background radiation is aligned with the plane of our galaxy. It is known the galaxies are surrounded by hydrogen clouds as consequence of the galaxy formation. The cosmic rays collide with hydrogen nuclei and create plasma. In this sense, the new tide light theory detects the interaction of photons of light with hydrogen clouds, whose redshifts are by the way quantized throughout space. If the Big Bang theory were correct, the initial explosion would have distributed the galaxies in concentric shells centered on Earth. The plasma is a ionized gas permeating the universe, the most common phase in the universe defined as the fourth state of matter after solid, liquid and gas. Electrons in the plasma have a natural frequency lower than the frequency of the incoming photons. Therefore, the electron can absorb photons, oscillate and remit photons of light. At current knowledge, we have a density of about 0.5 electrons in every cubic meter of space. New tidal light works only in space where the electrons of the plasma, consisting basically in a ionized gas, are free to move independently to each other. It doesn't work, for example, in a transparent glass where the atoms are fixed together, therefore unable to recoil. There is no redshift in a glass. The greater the density of the electrons, the less the possibility to recoil, therefore the emitted photon is identical to the absorbed one. The free state of the electrons is the reason why their oscillation is not transferred to the other electrons in the plasma, but it gets radiated as energy under the form of a new photon. This new photon has less energy, the frequency is reduced and the wavelength is longer, it is redshifted. Before to introduce the mathematical aspect of new tired light, let's introduce the quantities involved in the coming calculations. Collision cross-section is the probability of a photon to collide with an electron. Since frequency of all electromagnetic radiation traveling through the plasma is much higher than the resonant frequency of the plasma itself, the photons will be always re-emitted. The mean free path is the average distance traveled by a photon between successive collisions with electrons, which modify the energy of the photon itself. As the cross-section becomes bigger, as the wavelength of the photon increases by each collision, the distances between collisions become shorter and shorter, until the photon reaches the Earth. number of collisions is the total number of collisions photon-electron. Please consider it as a temporary formula, as we will later express it in a different way. The initial
Christian energy of incoming photon and the energy lost to an electron can be calculated as follows. We can calculate the increase in wavelength at each collision with an electron. The value is equal to the Compton constant, or namely the increase in wavelength at each interaction, not dependent on the initial wavelength. The total increase in wavelength of the photon at each collision with an electron can be calculated as follows. The secondary photon is in the microwave region and comes from photons in the ultraviolet field of spectrum. If we consider, for instance, the photon corresponding to the wavelength equal to red, then it generates the cosmic background radiation with a wavelength equal to 21 cm. Through our telescopes, we detect a peak in a cosmic background radiation coming from a photon of light in the ultraviolet, which in turn gets reshifted as well. It means we should be able to detect a signal of 82 Hz. The redshift is the total shift in wavelength divided by the original wavelength. The value of the Hubble constant is calculated by the new tidal light theory expressing the relation between the Hubble value and the properties of the electron, instead to be related to recession velocity. As the redshift is caused by light losing energy in interactions with electrons, we have an incredible coincidence between the Hubble constant, the so-called rate of expansion of the universe, and the parameters of the electron. It is the Ashmore's paradox. <laughs> It's the second formula of the total number of collisions photon electron if we take into account the free mean path getting shorter and shorter as the photons travel throughout space. It is because of the collision cross section which increases as the wavelength increases by each collision. The sum of all free mean paths is the distance travel and it is a mathematical progression. We have the core of the new tidal light theory, as we can express the redshift through an exponential function with the distance. It is a perfect straight line for small distances corresponding to nearby galaxies, what, for instance, Hubble has measured. It curves for great distances corresponding to faraway galaxies. It is the reason why we measure increasing redshifts for faraway galaxies. They are not receding due to the expansion of space, but their photons of light are colliding with electrons in the intergalactic medium, perfectly matching the exponential redshift function. <laughs> The dispersion measure is a parameter that measures the dispersion of an emitted pulse whose frequencies are emitted simultaneously but they suffer a time delay at the arrive due to absorption or emission by electrons in the intergalactic medium. In vacuum all frequencies travel at the same speed of light and there is no dispersion. But vacuum is only a theory because we have effectively an intergalactic medium composed of electrons in the plasma which cause a dispersion. Standard physics states that in a medium, a longer wavelength 
for instance red in the visible spectrum or radio in the full spectrum, travel the fastest and arrive first. <laughs> But in case of fast radio bursts, the shorter wavelengths, violet in the visible spectrum or gamma and cosmic rays in the full spectrum, travel the fastest. And it supports the new tidal light theory, because lower wavelengths have a smaller collision cross-section, it implies less number of total collisions and therefore a smaller time delay. By knowing the time dilation between the higher and the lower frequency, it is possible to obtain the dispersion measure. We have another formula for the dispersion measure because it's defined as integrated column of density of free electrons between an observer and a source. As the distance is function of the redshift and the distance is known through other astronomical tools, then we can determine the mean free electron number density. A fast radio burst provides a tool to determine the mean electron density of the intergalactic medium by knowing the distance of the photon source by other methods, for instance angular diameter or luminosity. The Big Bang theory says that redshifts are caused by stretching of space but new tidal light proves that redshifts are caused by interaction between photons of light and electrons in the plasma of the intergalactic medium space. At first, we can express the diameter as function of the redshift according to new tidal light based on the value of redshift already determined. On this way, we can express the dispersion measure as function of the redshift. We can compare the dispersion measure values between fast radio burst and new tire light as a tool to validate the new tire light theory. So far, there is only a small percentage of difference. In 2013, Thornton and in 2016, Keen published, respectively, a dispersion measure for a group of four first radio bursts emitted from pulsars, a dispersion measure for a radio source in a host galaxy. In the graph, it's possible to see the discrepancy between new tidal light and the Thornton's regression due to the fact that the pulsars have an intrinsic gravitational redshift up to 0.6. The values of the gravitational component corresponding to the value on the graph is 0.056. If we subtract this value in the regression, we obtain the graph below. The discrepancy is in the slope of the diagram. If we define a dispersion measure of Thornton in terms of new tidal light, it would have a dispersion measure equal to 1830 logarithm 1 plus z instead of the determined 2830 logarithm 1 plus z with a difference of 23%. Every star produces radiation at all frequencies. As we have seen, most of the light photons escape the galaxy, traveling through the space and interacting with the intergalactic medium, then to reach the Earth, giving the redshift in the spectrum. Some light photons collide with atoms inside the galaxy and unite them by the photoelectric effect. Dejected electrons recombine with other elements and form neutral hydrogen atoms. of the galaxy, the rest of light photons collide with hydrogen atoms and unite them by the same photoelectric effect. But some ejected electrons do not recombine, because the velocity is greater than escape velocity, namely 
the kinetic energy is greater than the gravitational pull of the galaxy. It is the maximum wavelength of the photon capable of uniting an electron in an atom. The fan value tells us that at least a photon in the ultraviolet field or in a higher energy range, like X-ray or gamma, will give the electron enough energy to escape the galaxy and enter the intergalactic medium. Every galaxy is the source of free electrons that fill the intergalactic medium for billions of years. Under certain conditions, temperature and density, both ejected electrons and the protons left behind will form a Wigner sized crystal, or electron glass, in a structure named body centered cubic lattice. Only the protons left behind are affected by gravitational forces, therefore interacting with the rotation of the galaxy, that could represent the unseen dark matter, a sort of positive spherical cloud of transparent Wigner sized crystals. In terms of potential, it is possible to determine the radius of the sphere of the Wigner crystal with which the electron must interact in order that the potential energy dominates the kinetic energy, when the kinetic energy is smaller than the potential energy. By the formula, it is possible to determine the minimal radius of the Wigner crystal dependent on the temperature of the plasma. You can observe that the radiation can pass through the crystal without destruction effect, without blurring effect, without deviating the path of light, no Compton effect, and a straight line because the body-centered cubic lattice is specially coherent. The electron in the crystal can absorb and emit photons of light as explained in the new child light theory. The Big Bang theory states that as the supernovae are standard candles in cosmology and explode when they reach a critical mass, then they all reach exactly the same luminosity during the bang. The Big Bang theory observes that the higher the redshift of the supernova, or namely the distance from us, the longer takes the supernova to decay the brightness, which reaches a maximum and then decreases. It is interpreted as a relativistic time dilation as the redshift is bigger than 1, so that the constants of the speed of light cannot be broken. The new tide light theory states that the delay of their brightness in supernovae is due to the pulse broadening. The effect comes from the optic. For instance, when the rectangular pulse travels through an optical fiber, the red light travels faster than the violet, because the latter is more refractive. The farther the light travels down the fiber, the broader the pulse becomes because the broadening effect becomes always stronger. We can think of this effect applied to the supernovae, which are similar events having an impulse generated in a short time, with a difference. The intergalactic medium works out as a channel for the light that broadens the light curves and the dispersion measure measures this effect. High frequencies associated to violet in the visible spectrum or radio in the full spectrum arrive earlier than low frequencies associated to red in the visible spectrum or gamma ray in the full spectrum, even if they come from the same event. The more electrons on the path, the greater the delay. Even with broadening, the area under the light curve must remain constant as the number of photons does not change. It is the reason why the larger the redshift, the smaller is the maximum amplitude measure, or rather, the supernovae look like fainter than they actually are. It is because of different light wavelengths traveling at different speeds and arriving at different times. It is a proof that the time dilation is due to pulse broadening and not from the expansion of space where the maximum should be always the same. Bibben theory explains that with the acceleration of the expanding universe.
Lyndon Ashmore plotted the number of supernovae per redshift bin of 0.05. He observes that for bin of redshift greater than 0.05, the number of supernovae is constant, or namely, the supernovae are equally spaced, fully consistent with the static universe, instead of an expanding universe where the supernovae events should be closer, as the universe at that time was smaller. Between 0 and 0.05, there is the highest number of supernovae, because of supernovae 1a, they used as standard candles, can be local and are not the same in the further universe. It was reported that two types of supernova actually exist, denoting that they are caused by different events, respectively a white dwarf star collecting mass in a nearby universe and two white dwarfs colliding in the further universe. It implies that the light curtain plate of the supernovae cannot be applied to more distant supernovae and that the relativistic time dilation is not correct. The Malmquist bias is a statistical error related to the samples of supernovae chosen for measuring the time dilation. As the standard candles, supernovae 1a, are too dim to be seen in the farther universe, then the scientists started to look for brighter supernovae, which consequently take more time to rise and to decay. That is, in order to demonstrate then that greater the distance, the greater is the time dilation due to the expansion of space. With the new Tyler theory, there is no time dilation due to the expansion of space, but just a dispersion due to the pulse broadening. The greater the distance, the greater is the dispersion due to collisions photon-electron in the intergalactic medium. Quasar light curves show a static universe. They don't show any broadening and thus any time dilation. If there is no time dilation, there is no expansion of the universe able to rule out the light process. The pulse broadening effect is actually lost because the signal emitted from quasar is continuous, so that any dispersive effects like the broadening would overlap. But the effect is exactly the same for the supernovae. In the case of quasars, it would be seen only at the beginning and at the end of the signal, but we were not here when the first signal came and we will not be here when the last signal arrived. It's really important, we can only receive what is now in the middle of the continuous signal, where apparently all wavelengths arrive simultaneously, showing no time dilation, according to the Big Bang theory, or no dispersion, according to the new tidal light theory. It is thought that quasars are at the edge of the universe, having rested values up to 5. They should show, according to the Big Bang theory, time dilations due to the expansion of space. Moreover, in order to see the quasars at those distances, it will require an extremely intrinsic brightness never seen in our universe. <laughs>